guys, we're back with another thin wall pressure vessel problem. We just did a little introduction video last video. And so this is an example of a thin wall pressure vessel problem, okay? Look, we've got a, a, a uh, remember we talked about different kind of cylinders last time. We talked about spherical and we talked about cylindrical. This is maybe your air compressor in your garage. This is a combination of both of those tanks, spherical and cylindrical. And if you remember, we introduced two kinds of stress, right? Sigma equals PR over T, which we called hoop stress. Hoop, there it is. Hoop, there it is. Okay. And, and then we have sigma equals PR over 2T, which we called longitudinal stress, okay? And the, the hoop is trying to make the, cyl the cylinder get bigger in diameter, whereas the longitudinal is trying to uh, uh, push the ends off the tank, okay? So this, pr this problem says... You've got an internal tank pressure of 80 PSI. You've got an inner diameter of 22 inches. Don't get that confused with radius, please. Thank you. And then you've got wall thickness of a quarter of an inch. So the thing is a quarter of an inch thick. And if you remember about these things over here, okay? P, well, that's pressure, okay? And then you've got R. One of the most missed things here, R is the internal ID, okay, or the internal radius, sorry. So it's internal or inner radius. Here's the way I remember that. Pressure tank, where's the pressure? Inside the tank, where's the radius? Inside the tank, okay? And then T, T is the wall thickness, okay? So if you remember those things, because a lot of times what they'll do in these problems is they'll give you the OD of the tank, and if they give you the OD, you have to subtract that wall thickness off times two, right? There's a thickness on either side of the tank so that you have the inner radius. That's kind of a, a little tricky thing that um, a lot of students mess up on, okay? So this problem says to draw a stress element and, and, and find all of the stresses acting on point A, okay? What in the world is a stress element? I don't think we've talked about that yet, okay? A stress element is a little infinitesimally small piece of a material at point A. Here he is, whoop, and I'm gonna blow that up over here, okay, and here he is. There's that little chunk of material, a little big piece of material right there at point A. What's he feeling, okay? He can be feeling a couple of different things. He can be feeling something like this, right? As I pressurize this, it wants to push the ends off the tank, right? So if I'm the little piece of material, what am I feeling? I'm feeling this stretch in this way, right? And also the pressure is trying to make the hoop, the, the circumference, bigger. So that might be stretching me also. And so I get stretched like this. Now we call this sigma Y, and we call this, you'll never guess, sigma X. Now when you draw these stress elements, the sigma X on this side is the same as the sigma x on that side. But why? Because of uh, Newton's third law, right? Every action causes an equal and opposite reaction, okay? Same thing here. This has to be the same as that. Of course, if what if this is a, a pressure tank, I mean a, a, a vacuum tank? Maybe it's a vacuum cylinder, right? Well, now the atmospheric pressure on the outside is bigger than the pressure on the inside, and you get an opposite effect you actually get these arrows turned around and now it's being in compression instead of in tension. So you can have it in tension, okay? And then the other thing you get is something like this, okay? And we draw this on here like so, and this is called shear stress, okay? Now if I'm point A here, do I feel any shear stress? Maybe if there was a giant that was going and he's like, Rrr! and put a torque here and a torque there, Rrr! right? And it's got this big twisting motion, trying to twist it. 
Then I would have some shearing, right, of the material. But we don't have a giant that's twisting this. We just have pressure only, okay? And therefore, in this configuration here, which is in a horizontal, vertical kind of situation, their shear stress is zero. Now, a little bit later, we'll learn that stress is directional. And if I take that stress element and I start rotating it, then I do start to have shear stress. Well, when would you ever need that? Well, maybe this tank, instead of being just the ends welded straight up and down, I don't know, maybe it's like that, right? It's a, uh, It's got a seam on there that's at some kind of angle, and now I want to know the stress at an angle. We'll do that next chapter. That's called stress transformation, but that's for another day, okay? So this is my stress element, a little bitty piece of material. Okay, and I'm going to investigate what's going on with that stress element, okay, for this problem with this, these parameters here, okay. So here we go, this is pretty easy, okay. I've got two, I've got sigma x and I've got sigma y here, right. You just have to decide what causes what, right. And so the hoop, which I'm going to draw just as a cylinder here, right, the pressure is pushing out on that hoop, all the way around the same amount, right? There he is. And so it's trying to make the whole diameter, the circumference bigger, okay? So the hoop is here. This guy's hoop, okay? And then of course, in this direction, in the horizontal direction, why am I getting a stretch in this direction? Because the pressure is trying to push the ends off the tank, right? And so this guy over here is gonna be caused by longitudinal stress. So this looks pretty easy. Let's see if we can calculate this. And all you got to pay attention to is make sure your units cross out here. I'm telling you this again, right? So sigma hoop, there it is, <laughs> is PR over T, the pressure, 80 PSI, which is pounds per square inch times R. Our inner radius. Well, they gave you the inner diameter, and so that is uh, 11 inches. Okay, and then divided by T, and the wall thickness is 0.25 inches. Okay, and so what is that? Well, clear that is 80 times 11 equals, divided by 0.25, 3520. Now what units is that? Because inches here and inches there canceled out, and I'm left with PSI. Hey, that's good stuff. Okay, or, or 3.52 KSI, wah, okay. Guess what? That's hoop stress. That goes right here. 3.52 KSI. Now what about longitudinal stress? Okay, so sigma longitudinal equals, is anything different? Same pressure, okay? Same ID, okay, 11 inches. And then same thickness, 0.25 inches. Except, we've got a 2 there, don't we? What is that 2 going to do? It's going to give me the exact same answer as that, except divide by 2, right? So I can just go divide by 2 equals 1760. 1760 PSI, or 1.76 KSI. So that's this guy over here. 1.76 KSI, okay? Now the one thing that you might be asking yourself is, hang on a second, this says thin wall pressure vessels. How do I know it's a thin wall pressure vessel? Well, number one, we're not gonna give you any thick wall pressure vessels, they behave a completely different way. They don't obey these equations over here. But how do you check that? It's pretty simple. The, the thin wall is just this. It's the radius 
um, divided by the thickness, okay? And if that number, whatever this ratio here is, the radius divided by the thickness, if that's bigger than 10, then we say it's a thin wall pressure vessel and it's gonna abide by, those equations are gonna be valid there, right? So for our particular problem, we've got what? 11 divided by 0.25, which is, what is that? 11 divided by 0.25, that's 44. Which is what? Way bigger than 10, right? So guess what? Yep, you're a thin wall pressure vessel, okay? So I hope that uh, helps. It's pretty simple, but we'll, and the next one, hang on, we're gonna work on a lot harder. But this is our little introduction also to stress elements. We're gonna see these guys pop up more and more, especially in the next chapter. All right, I hope that helps. I'll see you on the next video.